Hello and welcome to Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month. And it's December, the final Tech of the Month of the year. Guys, it's been a great 2019, mm. hasn't it? So we're going to give you a little bit of a special insight into our favourite bits from this year, maybe even some outtakes. Take a look. think I shouldn't have done. I was like, this is great, this is great. And then I was like, I can't possibly do this. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to go first, and I've brought some new wheels. Some Hunt 34 Aero Disc Wide Wheels. Lovely. Now, we, we love Hunt. You know, we the do guys, love Hunt. The guys at home would have noticed that. They've been in our editor's choice a couple of times over the years, and Tech of the, tech of the Month as well. Yeah, we've covered them pretty extensively, because they keep releasing just really good product. So these launched back in the summer, which was when we first covered them, but they've only become available uh, at the end of September and we've got our first set now. And as you can maybe hear, they are made of aluminium. Tent were very passionate about the idea that aluminium should be as good as carbon. And it should be really. For a long time, people's aluminium wheels have largely just been, you know, bomb-proof wheels or, you know, good training wheels or wheels they spec on a value bike in the lower ranges of their bike ranges. So Hunt decided that they try and shake things up a bit and came out with this. Now, do these have that really loud ratchet sound? First thing you want to know, isn't it? That's, you've got <laughs> do to. they sound like a motorbike? It's a sign of quality, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I think you Yes! <laughs> Pretty loud. They do. So my riding friends will be very pleased to Absolutely. hear that. Um, but these wheels come with quite a lot of big claims from Hunt. Okay. Um, so these are the fastest aluminium wheels on the market, according to Hunt. Well, wow. that's a big, claim. a big claim. And even bigger than that is Hunt claim these are faster than Zip's 202 NSW carbon wheel set of a similar depth, which is a big claim for an aluminium set of wheels. Massive, yeah. Yeah. huge. Yeah. So I'm assuming then it's faster than every other aluminium wheel as well. Of course, yeah. goes without yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. James, right? Okay. Um, but yes, it is faster than any yeah. other aluminium wheel set on the market when tested with a Schwalbe Pro 1 tyre of a 25mm depth, mm -hmm. which was the tyre that Hunt deemed fastest in the market in their wind tunnel testing. To make them aerodynamically as quick as they have, uh, they've got rid of the braking tract, which was the first thing that Hunt believed to be the biggest, or one of the biggest, uh, barriers to a fast set of wheels is rim braking, because when you have a braking tract, you have to build the profile parallel and it has to be a certain width because you need that material on there to basically have enough material to break on. So that allowed them to redesign the rim and you can see that it's sort of this like it's like a teardrop shape. It's almost like a bulb shape. It is like a bulb yeah, shape yeah. which is goes back to their 48 limitless wheels but that was to a really exaggerated effect and they can't do that with aluminium because that was about carbon resin being applied to the wheel but they have gone for this more bulbous shape with this flatter back profile yeah. on it which is of course an aerodynamic shape we know that from bike design yeah. a lot of bikes have that on their tubing shapes um, it's also wider so the wider the rim again like the 48 millimeter uh, wheels really wide. They've made a wider aluminium rim. So this is 26 millimeters wide externally at yep. its widest point, um, which makes it faster um, through the air. And obviously it's like it's perfect now is like sort of tire size is increasing. Uh, no, 25 or 28 now as well. That that sort of slightly wider means that it gives the best shape for a wider tire. And you know, yeah. it's better for everything. And that is something that Hunt have really been paying a lot of attention to. 
um, is tire and rim interface, which is actually how you make a wheel faster, is by perfecting that. Uh, and then for the rest of the build, it is of course tubeless ready, which comes as standard with Hunt wheels, and they will even set them up for you if you buy them on their website, which is really cool. Potentially, the biggest wow factor for me is that uh, weighing these, the wheel set comes in at uh, 1,490 grams wow. for the pair, which wow. is for an aluminium <laughs> wheel set is yeah. absolutely crazy. And at the price too, because it is... Yeah, £479 for the yeah, wheel so set, that's... which is... So the package complete, you're looking at a very fast and wallet friendly wheel set. Really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, like I said, there is nothing ready you need to, or you'd want to change on that. Great. Thank you, Rupert. James, you're going to go next. Aren't you? Yes, and I've brought something a little bit unusual, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, it's from a brand that, as road cyclists, we might not have necessarily heard about, but it's a brand called Wolf Tooth. Uh, American brands, uh, they're really, really well known in mountain bike circles and starting to get really well known in gravel and the off roads, like the, the really cool stuff these days. Um, and they make really nice aluminium bits. So componentry, everything you can think of. And they've started to bring out these cool little things. This is the N-Case, N-Case system. And it's the Bar Kit 1. So before you kind of go, what the heck is it? <laughs> I'll tell you, this is a complete tool system that you can store on your bike. So it's super cool. You've got one here and then in this one here as well, you pull it out and you have two very, very neatly machined aluminium tools. So, just like so. So, and it gives you 14 tools to basically cover every eventuality that you might find on your bike if you're out on a ride. Oh, so these, these are bar ends, so these go into yes. your handlebar, so that's yeah. where you can store all your tools. That's the cool thing about it. So this is kind of like one of the new things that sort of uh, the brands are doing now, is they're looking at ways to store items on your bike without it being that it's obvious. Certainly a little um, page we've taken out of Mountain Biking's book, isn't Absolutely. it? Is that yeah. storage on bike rather than Because it's horrible your carrying and and stuff in your pocket. Well, I think you said it in reviews and stuff before. It's like, you know, anything that puts the weight on your bike is way better than having it on yourself. Yeah. And this is one of those ways to do it. So it's super neat. And uh, so you, this one here, if we look at this one, first of all. So you've got a chain tool. So you use the other to actually obviously adjust it. What is that then? So this is a tubeless plug kit. Oh. So you have these little, little funny little bits of twiglet and you stick it on, shove it in if you've got a puncher and that plugs the hole. So it's a really, really neat system um, that can help you to carry on riding and not have to put a tube in your tubeless system. So that you've got if that. You've, you've gone sort of the extreme of a a fairly big size. Something bike. that the sealant doesn't seal, yeah, absolutely. But it's a really, really neat system, that one. And then this one is a bit more obvious. So you've got your standard Allen keys and other tools that you can use, and it's a neat little socket system. So each of these pops out, and there's magnets in here as well, so you can't Very lose important. them. So every single one is them instantly. Because yeah. they are pretty small, and then you can just might swallow them. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you plop it in there, and the good thing as well, there's a magnet inside this one, so as soon as you put it towards it, it clicks in, and then you can just basically use that. And it's really neat to get into like little spots, and you've got basically 14 tools all together, so you've got all the Allen keys that you could use all the way up to an eight mil, so obviously up to your pedals, um, and then there's spoke keys, there's valve core remover keys, the Torx keys, it's even like a, a really, really decent sized Torx key here, so for like, your rotors and everything. And then there's magnets in the bottom as well. So, so yeah. my question to you is yeah. that they, they come from the mountain bike world, but do they fit in road going handlebars? They do. They, what Wolf does say is they will fit in the majority of road handlebars. So you might find if you've got a really shallow drop handlebar with a tight curve, it might be a bit tricky, um, but they do bend. So when you go in, they will bend through. And this rubber here can be trimmed to size so it, you can fit it nice and snugly inside your bars. Uh, it also comes with like a little bit of heat shrink, so you might find that this might not fit the exact diameter, so you put a little bit of this on and then shrink it down to size with, with your hairdryer or whatever, and uh, that'll help it to sort of fit in. Nice aluminium machines, bar ends. How much does a pair of these cost? Yes, so there's no getting away from the fact that these are not, these are premium products. So this is a £127 for the complete kit. 
You can buy parts separately uh, for much cheaper prices, uh, but this has got everything. And you have to bear in mind that those tools are like they're, they're made in the US um, in Wolf 2's factory. So everything is done, it's all precision machine. So it's really, really good quality, but yeah, the price is at the top end. Good, well, I'm gonna go next. And as you can see here, I've got a couple of helmets from one of our favorite helmet brands, I would say. I think you guys would be happy to say that. And that's Met. We do like Met. Um, we love Met, yeah, we use them a lot, um, especially their Trenta, which is yeah. their high-end, you know, sort of, Aero Road helmet with super lots, light. lots of cooling, super, super duper Very light. Comfy. Um, and as you can see, this kind of resembles um, that in a sense. It's got a few of their sort of design features yeah. there. Um, but this is their Vinci, V I N. -C this is their new uh, mid level road helmet, right? They well, launched this back in the level, end of the entry summer, level. entry level, yeah. Yeah, so they, they launched this uh, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, and there's two versions um, which do look very similar uh, and there this is the all road uh, and this is the vinci uh, all road um, as you can sort of imagine is very much a case of you know a helmet for for the cyclist that does a bit of everything they need a helmet for the commute or they want to do a bit of you know leisure riding even a bit of gravel riding hence the um hence the visor up there which is very easily um, attachable and detachable. And the good thing about this helmet, this costs around £70. That's good. Um, but it, it is a very simple helmet. Um, you know, it's, it's used for their um, sort of lower end entry level point of, of the market. We'll, we'll talk about the helmet in general. It, it has like a 360 band in there, which you would get on most helmets, but that tries to avoid sort of pressure points and contact points on your head. So it's tightening all the way around the head, not just, you know, your temples or your front or back. Um, the ratchet system at the back is uh, four positioned, you know, uh, adjustable for, you know, fitting your head in terms of up and down movement. Um, it also has a cool little light at the back, um, which you can see here, nicely demonstrated by Rupert. And that has a couple of modes, um, and that isn't detachable on this model. Okay. Um, so that comes as standard um, on the all road. And it gives you a, a tiny bit more visibility. You should always, if you're commuting or riding your bike in general, you should have a set of lights with you, um, ideally. Uh, but that gives a nice little You know, always have bit. one though. So yeah, if we slightly move over to the more road-going version um, of, of the two, really, because they're both launched this year, uh, the Vinci um, is £100. Um, and again, interestingly, it weighs similar to, to the all-road. This is 100, uh, 265 grams. Um, but the difference being here is that you get MIPS technology. Uh, this one in particular, thanks to James, just before we started filming, put it on the uh, removable light. So this light Again, does the exact same thing. Uh, so 16 vents, uh, and as I say, that's kind of inspired by the Trenta. In essence, they're, they're a similar helmet. Yeah. This one is a bit lighter, despite the MIPS. If you took the MIPS out of this, okay. then okay. you know it, it would be lighter than this, I'd right. imagine by a 15 to 20 grams, yeah. uh, maybe. Uh, Met say this one's a bit more aggressive. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's tailored towards the road, serious road cyclists, yeah. where this is a bit more relaxed and a bit more um, comfortable, okay. should we say. Okay. This is the Specialized S-Works Turbo Creo SL. So this was launched in the summer. It was a very big launch for Specialized. Mm. Um, their first time entering the road, e proper road e-bike market. They'd obviously done hybrid bikes and commuter bikes as e-bikes. And we're seeing quite a few bikes like this, aren't we? Like, you know, Villier have come out with their Ciento One hybrid yeah. and Look you know, have got theirs Ribble as well. were Ribble. famous for, you know, producing a lightweight We've one. We've just had the new Cannondale Super 6 Evo Neo, mm. which is which looks great. direct competitor to this, a yeah, lightweight, lightweight e-bike. So the battery, which is in the down tube on this model, um, although it's kind of difficult to tell, the down tube is bigger, but it's not enormous. It's, it's, it's wider this way than it is that way. Yeah. So from the side profile, it looks pretty neat, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and that's a, um, what they're calling the SL1320 battery, which Ooh. as the name suggests is a- Trips off the tongue, It's a 320 it? watt hour battery. Uh, and the motor, which is around the bottom bracket, the SL1.1 motor is a 250 watt motor with the battery having a range of 130 kilometers, so specialized to say, um, which is quite lengthy mm. for a e-bike. And I've been riding this 
uh, a little bit recently. I've not had much time on it. I also went to the launch in Switzerland, but obviously the roads in Switzerland are very different to my training roads in London. As you, it's a bit dirty. It's a bit dirty, isn't it? Yeah. It was raining yeah. when I rode it. Um, it's waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get any electric shocks. Yeah, I was not fried oh, you when you I was there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. <laughs> Still smoking. If I take that off. Um, it's really interesting to ride. Uh, actually, it has four, technically four modes of support. Off, off. No, you laugh. It is actually a mode. The, oh, the system really? is still on, so it still tracks oh. your distance and time and power output. Yeah. There's a power meter in the bottom bracket of this as well. Oh, that's cool. Um, which mm. you can connect to your computer. So it still outputs all of your data, but it just doesn't give you any support. So then there's eco, there's sport, and there's turbo. Yeah. Um, and I like turbo mode. Everybody loves Everyone it. Everyone likes Tur turbo. Mode. Turbo. Well just live in turbo. Yeah. It's a bit like anything that's painted red, isn't it? You know, yeah. It's going to be the fastest thing in the world. Turbo mode is great, but... I have been doing my fair share of eco work because, you know... Sure, well, that's I, what he tells us anyway. I like to graft. I'm a hard <laughs> worker. Um, and actually, eco, I would say, is closer to feeling like you're riding a normal bike than it feels like you're riding an e-bike. Okay. You are put, outputting effort, like quite a significant amount of effort in eco mode. Mm. Um, it's difficult enough that you can feel it in your legs. It doesn't feel like you're just getting a free ride. Um, and to be fair, even in turbo mode, it doesn't necessarily feel like that. Only feels like that on hills of a certain gradient. So on a very shallow gradient, probably below 5%, you absolutely glide along. And it's a really weird, unnerving sensation of you're not pedaling hard enough for how fast you're going. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit, feels a little bit funky. And this is a one-by system, I can see. You're right. It is a one-by system. Mm -hmm. It's a 46-tooth chainring on the front. And then 11 to 42 on the Whoa, rear. that is massive. Which is an absolute That's whopper, That's a good eh? spread of gears. Very good spread <laughs> yeah. of gears. You've yeah. got options. Um, <laughs> He's you certainly got options. <laughs> it's, it's not one-to-one, -one, but it's close. <laughs> it's yeah. getting there. And this is a really cool system because it's Shimano Jaw Race DI2 at the front end, business at the front, and then it's party at the back with Shimano XTR DI2, which is incredibly, in, incredibly flush. Well, you need, um, you need that, don't you? Because you, it, yeah. it's such a big cassette, you can't use a, a standard It's a special road. long cage mountain bike derailleur. Uh, it's got the clutch in there as well. Because you've got the Future Shock at the front. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so fresh off the Roubaix um, is the Future Shock 2.0, uh, which is, is, is nice, actually. Uh, it's Hydraulic. the first time I've ridden it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's something a bit different, but it doesn't overpower the sensation of the ride you kind of I don't really realize it's there which is kind of what it makes want. more sense on a heavier bike like this anyway sure, um, it, so. one which you're potentially yeah. hitting hard, the rough stuff at a greater speed yeah. either because of the assistance or because of the weight if you're traveling downhill mm. um, and it's got Roval CLX 50s on which is again incredibly flush <laughs> a very high a two grand wheel set on this bike but they are great wheels yeah um, it's, this is adding up to a lot of flushness, isn't it? Yeah, £10,999 so, worth. 10000 <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, £10,999 worth. So this is, this is a high-end. Incredibly. Very prestigious, mm -hmm. very boutique-y mm -hmm. e-bike. But it goes further, there is one higher. Is it? Ooh. The limited edition <laughs> Tell found, me about Founders it. model, Wow! which retailed for something like 17 grand, I believe, Whoa. and they only made 250 of them. You do feel the weight of the bike, and that you, there's no getting away from that. When it's got all of the bits on, it weighs about 13 and a half kilos, but um, without the battery pack, it comes in at just under 12 kilos. But you get 65, 70 k Yeah, that, it's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it really it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, so that is the Specialized S-Works Turbo Creo SL, and that's my bike of the month. It's a very good bike of the month, I might add. Uh, and that kind of concludes us for uh, this round of Tech of the Month, and that concludes us for 2019. Mm. What a year it's been. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. And if you've liked this video, please do like and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel, clicking on the notification bell to make sure you see all the latest and greatest releases. Until next year, we'll see you then. I don't want this on. How's my hair? Great. Let's so, see. Same as it was.
Oh, I've got to put it back that's, on, that's lads. That. I can't. You can't. You can't not wear a hat with that, mate. Oh, it's, it's got a weird top. It's got a cowlick going on, isn't it? Oh. 